We are continuing tonight with our series, Afghanistan, What's Next? Last night, Susan Ormiston showed us the raw emotional toll the war has taken on civilians. Tonight, she looks at what Canada has accomplished there. Afghanistan has received more of Canada's aid money than any other country, nearly $2 billion over 10 years. That pays for a lot of development. But as Susan discovered, in Afghanistan, it all comes with great challenges. It's all in the detail. Finishing frescoes for Kandahar's new provincial council building, funded by Canada. The last one was blown up twice. A lot of Canadians are asking, nearing the end of this mission, what have we got to show for it? Well, I think this facility that we're seeing today is, uh, is an example of uh, the legacy that we will leave in Kandahar province. Spade work these last few months is speeding up. There's a budget to spend, and after five years, something to show. Across the street, we're taken to construction on a secure housing compound. This project in particular is designed to protect uh, the senior civil servants, uh, those who are uh, special targets of, of the Taliban intimidation campaign. Best intentions, but nothing is simple in Kandahar. A candidate for this safe housing was the deputy governor of Kandahar province. He toured the facility, but he never moved in. A week later, he was assassinated. Governing's tough when the enemy plucks off your leaders. Insecurity has been the bane of Canada's development efforts. To tour the projects still takes a military convoy and close protection. Tim Martin is Canada's top government representative in Kandahar. I see progress. Uh, I'm not going to hide the fact that this has security challenges. Throughout the five years we've been here, at a teacher's training college, upgraded with lots of loonies, women teachers won't show their faces for fear of being targeted. I like and I want to work uh, for my people of this country. They want to study the girls. They like school. They like study. Education, governance, health, Canada's invested in them all. And then there's water. to chop her out 34 kilometers north of Kandahar to see Canada's water project. It's pretty country. There's a dam right there at our three o'clock. Down there is a large reservoir and the Dalla Dam. Built in the 1950s, it's silted up and broken down through 30 years of war. It's meant to be one of Canada's marquee projects, $50 million to bring water from here to irrigate the Argandab Valley near Kandahar. But development work in insurgent territory has meant delays and some controversy. SNC-Lavalin has the engineering contract. It took two out of three years just for plans and then a debate over who would secure the project. The job went to Watan Group an Afghan security company, recently put on a blacklist by the Americans. Why are Canadian dollars being spent on a security company, Watan Group, that is blacklisted by the U.S. Defense Department? Our implementing partner is responsible for its security, and it is using a private security company. Using That's our true. money. The Canadian policy is that security companies must observe Canadian laws and Afghan laws. We're in close touch with it. Downstream, work is making a difference. Digging out and reshaping tributary canals. Fixing ancient, rusty gates. In this case, plugged by a dead cow. The provincial water director. Do you worry about insurgents attacking all the good work that's been done here? No. Uh, no, no. Because all these people need water. Everybody. I don't want to take the name. Of the even the Taliban need water. Yeah, yeah, even the Taliban. But in Kandahar, development work has often been overshadowed by terror. The mothers I've spoken to, Tim, said, until you can stop my kids being blown up, don't offer me a road. This job is not done. I see the conditions for success being put in place, but there's more to do, that's true. Canada's aid promise has been a challenging picture. 